Oh my gosh, I get the goosebumps every time I watch footage of Karen Akunowitz on national television. You guys, welcome to the Chef's Pantry. I'm Anna, and yeah, we're cooking with Karen Akunowitz today. This is such an exciting day. Um, she's a friend of mine. We've cooked with her before in the Hub Cooking Club a few times, actually. And now we're going to be with her in her home kitchen. And this girl is on fire. She is brave. She is supremely talented and she throws down when there is food and a camera in front of her. She is so much fun to watch. She has national fans and we're so lucky being in Boston because this is where she's decided to create brick and mortar. She has Fox and the Knife, an outstanding restaurant that earns national attention with every step she takes. She's a James Beard Award winner. She's been celebrated by travel and food and travel magazine, Condé Nast, the list goes on. Um, and, and we're gonna be making a simple summer meal with her. So Karen, are you there? Hi. Oh, I lost your audio. I don't know if I can get a thumbs up, if you can hear me. I can hear you. Oh, good, I got you. See, okay, it's live. Perfect. This is like, <laughs> we've got the internet talking about our favor. So you have not skipped a beat since the world slowed down. I feel like you have just sped up. What's been going on in your world right now? You know, I actually feel the same way, Anna. Um, we, you know, as the, everything is sort of slowed down and folks are at home and quarantining, um, we... At Fox and Knife made the decision to stay open and pivot to takeout. Um, so we never closed our doors. Um, we have been doing takeout, you know, since the since the very first day. And actually, I started a second business uh, called Fox Pasta, um, which is a wholesale pasta company. Um, and we do pounds of fresh pasta, sauces, um, ricotta, pesto, romesco, um, grated parmesan, grated pecorino, um, truffle butter, things like that that you can purchase at the restaurant and then cook at home. It's like semi-homemade situation. Um, so we have been running Fox Pasta as well as Fox and the Knife Takeout since March. Well, and it's really what we need right now, all those yummy carbs with delicious flavors. <laughs> right. <laughs> you put your finger on the pulse once again. Okay, I'm so <laughs> gonna kick things off, you have a beautiful signature cocktail prepared. Oh my God. What is it? Yes, and when I say signature, I wanna be very honest. This is signature to my backyard. This is the cocktail that I make all summer long um, for myself at my house. Um, I call it the backyard bourbon smash. So I like to, I'm gonna start out by, I like a little salt rim. Kind of reminds me, makes me feel like I'm at the ocean while I'm Ooh. actually just backyard quarantining. Um, I got a kiddie pool in my backyard, so I hang out there a lot. <laughs> I'm just gonna rim my glass with a little bit of salt. I've got a mason jar here, a ball jar here with some ice in it. Um, and I'm going to start out with, I'm going to squeeze some grapefruit. Now, you can definitely buy grapefruit juice. Uh, you can, I have a juicer back there that I definitely don't want to clean. Um, so I typically just, I don't, I usually don't even squeeze this into a bowl. I squeeze it right into the, into the jar, but I'm trying to be a little bit neater a little more, a little classier for you. I like the movie red grapefruit too. And there's nothing better than the fresh squeeze. Oh, it's, it's, it, so good. it's like, we can just fantasize that we're on the Malfi coast back on that. Yes. Coast. That's what we want. That is um, what we want. So I'm going to take, I have a good amount of ice in here because I like ice a lot. Um, I'm going to add about two ounces of bourbon. Yeah, I'm going to add all of, all of this grapefruit juice. Okay. And this is my little my little trick. Now you don't need to shake this, but I like to. And it's just a little trick that if you take a ball jar, screw the lid on tight, then you've got an instant, instant shaker. It's so hipster. I like that. I'm so I'm so not hipster. <laughs> I'm like the least cool person you know. Um, so then we've got, so the great thing is that you can actually just drink it just like that. And you've got a beautiful shake and drink. I do like to add the salt to the rim. So what I'm going to do is pour, pour it two thirds of the way up. Great. And then I like to top it off with a little bit of, now it depends how I'm feeling. It depends if it's a low ABV day or a not so low ABV day. 
Um, so I'll top it off with a little polar seltzer sometimes, or like today I'm going to add a little bit of a natural sparkling wine. Nice. Yeah. A little bubble floater on the top. Really. A little floater, a little, a little celebration. I'm going to toss that lime that I used in. I have a little bit of mint that I just cut from my herbs that grow outside. Great. And, you know, and you can use, if you have some herbs at your house, if you want to use basil, if you want to use soda water, tonic water, you can do whatever. Oh, that was beautiful. I, I found a little nest oh, hanging on by the side. Yeah. I love it. Oh, um, cheers. So cheers. Mm. cheers. Oh, that's so, the salt on the rim is a great touch. I even have great that with a margarita, but I like it with the bourbon. And, you know, I, I know people think that of, of bourbon as being a more winter spirit, being heavier, but with the bubbles and with the bright grapefruit and the lime and the mint, it's, it's just perfect for, um, for your backyard. That's what I think. I think I'm into this backyard barbecue <laughs> <laughs> bourbon snatch. Okay. So with cocktails in hand, we want to try something we haven't done before. The chef rapid fire. Are you ready? <laughs> just, just six, please. I'm ready. <laughs> your favorite piece of cooking equipment. Favorite piece of cooking, I mean. The knife. Chef's knife. Yeah. <laughs> if I picked something else, it would probably be a fish spatula. But honestly, like I can do almost anything with, with just a regular seven or eight inch in chef's knife. As long as it's sharp. That's all I need. Keep it, keep it fierce. Keep okay, it where, do you, where do you get your cooking inspiration? I get my cooking inspiration from everywhere. Um, for often, which sounds funny to say in this time, but travel is really inspiring to me. Um, not just, you know, the food that I eat when I travel, but the places you go to, culture of the places that you're at, and just being out of the space of the restaurant. I think it frees up your brain in a creative way um, that, you know, when you're in the day-to-day, -day, in the minutia, in the perfection of it, it's harder to for my brain to work creatively that way. So I need to take a little space mm. outside of that, yeah, to get to get creative. Go out and then come back in. Now, speaking yeah. of leaving home turf, besides your kitchen and Fox and the Knife, where is your favorite place to eat on an off day? Oh, Sarma in Somerville. Ooh. Um, Ooh. It has been one of my favorite restaurants forever. I think Cassie is... Um, she's a dear friend, but she's one of the most talented chefs that I know. And if I have a day off, that's, that's definitely where I'm headed. You always order the same thing. I, yes, because I'm like a regular person and we all like our things, but I do try and always order, you know, like a something that I haven't, that I haven't had before. Like the, I always get the za'atar fried chicken because mm. it is literally one of my favorite things on the planet. And when you do that well, you must order it, right? Yes. <laughs> culinary splurge, something that you have or maybe are coveting. Oh, culinary splurge. I mean, it was probably um, our Emilio Miti, um, our pasta machine when we opened. That was a big, we were really on a budget when we opened the restaurant and um, like counting every, every single penny. And that definitely was important to me and, and was, was a big splurge. So that was let, like a gift mm -hmm. to myself and to the restaurant. Well, talk about an investment that's paid forward tenfold. Oh my gosh, more than that, a hundred times over, truly. Yeah. So now what's the one piece of advice you've never forgotten that you pass along? Oh gosh, I have a couple good ones. One specific like restaurant kitchen piece of advice is like treat every moment like it is 7 30 on a Saturday hmm. um that every dish whether it's a Monday whether it's a Saturday you're putting the same amount of care um into you know as you would at the busiest time of your night but I think just for everybody my, my favorite trick is like when you're making a salad you always need a bigger bowl than you think you'll need it's important <laughs> That's great. Okay, well, speaking of bowls and all sorts of yummy things, we're going to pretend it's 7.30 on a Saturday right now with okay. your incredible pork milanese that you've prepared for us. So spin us through what is involved, uh, what, what are mise en place is and where we get started. Okay, so first of all, through the magic of television, 
Woo! Look at you! I'm so impressed. Our bar is now a kitchen. Were you on so, TV, Karen? I mean, you learn a trick or two. So <laughs> I'm just gonna put my cocktail, my cocktail up here in front of me. So we are going to make um, pork milanese. This is a dish that I have on the menu at the restaurant, and we are making it just a little bit more home friendly, aka easier, aka less dishes, aka you can make this on a Wednesday night and have plenty of time to spare and watch a movie afterwards. Mm. Um, so we are going to take, I have some pounded pork cutlets here um, that we are going to dredge in some seasoned AP flour, um, a little bit of egg and milk uh, wash, um, some panko bread, I love panko bread crumbs. We're going to season them with a little bit of thyme and Parmesan. We're gonna bread our chicken cutlets um, we're going to pan fry them and we're going to top them with a really bright, um, arugula salad with cherries and dressed in, um, olive oil, lemon juice. And we're going to make a little, um, mustardy mayo sauce. Ooh, so nice. all things that go really beautifully together and something you can definitely put together in 20 minutes. That's, that's my kind of meal. That sounds yeah, like, my yeah, like too. Too. turning Wednesday night into movie night. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think it's nice. <laughs> uh, so I've had this with chicken. I've had this with veal. Yes. I've had it with different proteins. What do you like about using pork? So, I mean, I love pork. Um, so for me, this is just a way to, a really simple way to really enhance it. And something that we do at the restaurant that we absolutely don't have to do, but we brine the pork overnight. We brine oh. it in whey. Um, we make so much house-made ricotta that we always have an abundance of whey left over. And so we started playing around in the beginning when we were working on this dish and we said, what if we brined it in whey with lemon and thyme and it is perfect um, if you marinate it overnight. It's also not a step that you have to do and I certainly wouldn't do um, if we were at home. You can also do, you can do a bone-in chop. Mm. Uh, that's sort of found it out. You can do, you know, slice a pork loin. Um, you know, it's cost effective. Um, you know, a, a pork loin feeds a lot of people. So you can make this for however many people are over and coming to your house. Um, it's just delicious. Is it something where after you do a little pan fry, you can bring it back to life in the oven, like on a low temperature yeah. if you're entertaining? Totally. Pop it back in the oven. Pop it back in the toaster oven. Um, and... You know, and, and it's warm again. I have to say, my mom used to make, my mom used to make this all the time when I was a kid. She would just call them chicken cutlets. And um, it's my favorite thing that she makes. And I would eat them cold out of the fridge the next day for lunch. That's great. That's and I still knew, I know one of the last times I went home, my dad picked me up from the airport. And he said, you know, I think there are a couple chicken cutlets in the fridge for you. And I was like, I called my mother and I was like, true or not true? There are chicken cutlets in the in the fridge for me. And she was like, there are. I was like, don't you dare eat those before I get home. <laughs> and home for you is New Jersey, right? Yes. <laughs> That's so great. Those are those are the things that I hope my kids will keep coming back for. Cool. Yeah, that's the best stuff. So, cool. so I'm just whipping a little bit of milk into my, my egg wash. Okay. I like the little production line here. Yeah. I like to make it easy. And then I'm going to, I seasoned my flour as well. I actually think that's a really important step. Um, a little bit of salt and pepper in your flour because that way you're seasoning every, you know, every part of your dish. That's, yeah, I, I like adding the herb to your panko mix too. So not only are you getting that nice texture, but you're getting that little punch of flavor. And exactly. so you put Parmigiano in with your panko? Yep. So, oh, I got a little cherry. Um, so I add to my panko, I add, I'm gonna do it now, I add a little bit of Parmigiano Reggiano. Great. Um, and I add some thyme. Um, it just gives it, you know, a, it just gives it a little more flavor. You get a little pop from the herb. The cheese is really rich. It makes it beautiful and golden when you, when you fry it. You could add a little, if you wanted to add rosemary or something like that, you could add rosemary as well, but I usually use, use thyme. Super. That looks so nice. I'm, I'm loving those little herb notes too. I feel like that's the influence of the Italian style cooking you bring into the box. Yeah. 
with your season. I put, I mean, fresh. for me, every dish, I mean, we put fistfuls of herbs into just about everything. But, you know, one of the things is that most of the dishes have their own, like, what is the, I always say, I'll say to the servers, what is the herb in the dish? Yeah. It's like this one, it would be thyme. Another one, it would be mint. It was the most prominent herb um, in the in the dish. So I'm going to give the meat itself a little bit of seasoning as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Season the meat, season the flour, season the egg wash. And then we've got that great Parmesan and uh, thyme in the breadcrumb. Great. And then not to be, we need to be handsy with our protein. We need to push it down. Yeah, you make it, you be, you be the boss of your protein. Look, you are the boss of the food. The food is not the boss of you. How did you decide to go on reality television? Oh, gosh. Um, I said no many, many, many times uh, before I actually said yes. The first season I was on Top Chef on Top Chef 13, I had talked to them like four years in a row before that. And it's just like, it's too big of a commitment. I'm too scared. Yeah. Um, you're gone for such a long time. You're completely sequestered. You know, all of, all of that stuff. And that last year, I was kind of like, I don't know. This is probably the last year that I can do it. I'm, I'm going to have more responsibility soon. Um, I had just become a partner at Myers and Chang. I, I think I was... 37 at the time. So I was kind of like, I'm getting a little old. I was like, I'm getting a little old to be competing <laughs> yeah, on reality. You're a runner. So, My mercy. <laughs> well, you know, and, um, and then I just, I, I did it. And then I said, Oh my God, I would never do that again. Um, it was a great experience for me. It was positive. It was really, really, really hard. Jeez. And I'm a really sensitive person who takes my work incredibly seriously um and so it's just it was it's a big challenge for me so i'm not sure how they got me to come back for all stars i was like absolutely not and then and but then i did so <laughs> are you glad you did i'm glad you did you are well that makes me feel better about it um no i am i am glad that i did you know what i thought this season now this is my kitchen magic we'll just go Ooh, like look at you okay um Swap out here. Other things. I'm going to um, I'm going to turn my. I'm using a cast iron pan. I have a Le Creuset pan that I really like. And what type of temperature do you yeah. like the the pork to meat? I'm putting it on a medium high. high. I'm putting it on a medium high. I'm going to try not to set off my smoke alarm. Oh, Stephen, saying you're definitely not old. Go easy on yourself, Karen. No, well, I mean, I was. Now I'm. I'm almost forty-two. So I, I, you are one of my favorite people to watch. Um, just from afar, even on social media, I feel like you are like constantly pushing, and um, and you are brave, and you take big moves, and even in the flavors of food that you present. But what has this whole experience of quarantine been like for you as a person because i i, I want to know <laughs> yeah no it's been crazy um i'm so used to being busy um and i was so incredibly busy that i i think the first almost three months really it was like every day trying to come up with something new trying to have new ideas and while we're talking i'm just going to add about a quarter of a cup of canola oil to this pan okay I'm using grapeseed. What do you think about grapeseed? That's perfect. Any neutral oil. Grapeseed is perfect. Canola is perfect. You just want something that you can get to a high temp. Okay. A little shallow fry. And so um, more than just a coating, a little bit deeper? Yeah, a little bit deeper. So it comes up, you know, almost halfway on Great. your protein. So depending on how thick your protein is, that's about how much you want to add. And you want to wait till that gets... That gets a little hot. I like to throw in a throw in a breadcrumb, and when it does a little happy dance, then I know, then I know it's ready. Great. And then while we are waiting for that to heat up, I like to multitask. So I'm gonna start pitting my little cherries for my salad. Great. While that heats up, and we'll pop that in. 
And could you use another stone fruit, like a peach or a totally. apricot? Totally. So I love nectarines and everything. You could absolutely lose, use apricot. Um, I love to do this with apples in the fall with like Ooh, a nice. apple, which I think is beautiful. And I like to, um, you can pickle the fruit as well. So that's really nice. It gives a little bit more acid to the dish. Just a simple, these are very juicy cherries. Um, so I just take them and I de-stem them and you just smush it a little with your knife and then it'll allow you to sort of peel it apart. Beautiful. These are very juicy. But yeah, any fruit that you, I mean, any fruit that you like, pork, pork and fruit sort of love each other. They do. I like how it works really well with sweet things like the caramelized onion or exactly. buttered apple. Like those, um, the, it's, it's, a, it's a special flavor how it can go a lot of different ways. And even, even over to like the piccata where it does so well with like the citrus. I think it's um, such a versatile meat. It's fun to play with. Yeah, I agree. Um, so I'm going to, I've got, I've got happy dancing breadcrumbs here. Okay, so, so do I. Ahead, then I am going to start my pork. And I like to sort of move it around a little bit and then let it, let it do its happy thing. And I've got a, and do you move it around at the beginning to keep it from sticking? Mine's already talking, it looks I will, The minute I put it in the pan, I kind of dance it around a little. But after that, I just leave it. When it's ready to not stick and be perfect, it's going to release itself. Okay. That's one of the things I always say, cooking continues to teach me patience, <laughs> um, which I could definitely still use some of. Um, and when I see it start to brown, along the edges, I'll pick it up and I'll check it out and I'll say, no, that's not quite done yet. With a nice quarter inch cut like that, when you've pounded it down, it's gonna be a really quick, quick cook. And I like quick, quick, which is nice. Simple. Yeah, and which is nice because then you don't have, um, you don't have the too dark on the outside, too raw on the inside situation. And I just have a little plate with a paper towel as my my little catch pad here. I can use a little more browning here, but I'm going to flip it first, and then I'm going to I'm going to go back over. How are you doing over on your side? Can you still hear me? My cat. <laughs> Just look. So I am, I'm just gonna keep talking. I am mixing together a little bit of mayonnaise and a little bit of stone ground mustard that we're gonna serve as a sauce with the pork, which I think is gonna be delicious. We're gonna cook it for just a little bit longer. And then we've got our salad. So we are going to add our cherries to. 
as well as some lemon juice. I'm just going to squeeze some fresh lemon juice right in. If I get a little seed in, I'm just going to pick it out. Karen, can you hear me? I can hear you now. Oh, my power went off. Oh, no. I kept my, going and just talking in case out. anybody could hear me. I wasn't sure. I know. You were in and out. And then it had to switch over to Wi-Fi. So we've got a generator kicking in. But I, I think my poor little poor is like, like really golden brown and beautiful on one side. Oh, my gosh. Okay. So I'm really no, sorry okay. about that. But here, let's see. I'm just getting my second... My husband in the show now trying to triage. Okay, well, I'm this is really I'm sweating. I already was hot because of the day and now it's just totally crazy but um okay so i want to see your pork <laughs> sorry about that okay so we're just finishing up our pork here it looks like you've given it a flip <laughs> i've given it a flip i'm doing it a little more on the other side in the meantime i just took my cherries and i added them to my salad and i've got arugula and then i have a little frise and some mustard greens in here um, you can really use whatever you want. You can use arugula, you can use frise, you can use mustard greens, you can use lettuce from your garden, um, you can use romaine. I mean, wh whatever you have kicking it around will make really a beautiful salad. And I dressed it with a little bit of fresh lemon juice. And I'm going to pour a little bit of olive oil, some salt, a little bit of fresh ground pepper. Mm -hmm. I'm going to my pork right here, and I'm going to take, now earlier I mixed together um, basically just a little bit of mayonnaise and stone ground mustard, or just a little creamy mustardy situation, again, delicious with the pork. I'm going to make sure to hit my pork on both sides with a little bit of kosher salt. Do you have a favorite mayonnaise? I use Hellman's. Oh, great. Okay, me too. <laughs> I think you were, you were like, let's check. Yeah, I, I grew up, a, you know, I don't make, you know, I make, we make all our own aiolis and stuff at work, but I almost always have Hellman's in my fridge because that was like growing up. We are a Hellman's family, and if there was not Hellman's mayonnaise and Heinz ketchup in the fridge, my dad would be having a freak out. You'd be calling at the airport again. Totally. <laughs> home if there are chicken cutlets and Hellman's, Mom. Totally. <laughs> but I love this. Adding a lot of stone ground mustard to it, I think, is just really, it's mustardy, it's creamy, and then you've got acid on the salad, and it's light. Someone said the other night about this dish. He said, I love this dish here. I could eat it all the time. The cherries are perfect and the salad is so light and the pork somehow is really satisfying, um, mm. but I never feel bad afterwards. I always feel like I could get up and go dancing. And like, that is always what I'm shooting for. I like to even throw a little lemon wedge right there. That's really nice. You know what I like using the same mixture for is Joe's stone crabs. Like oh, yes. Crab paws. Yes, I love that. Great. Um, I like that your motivation is to keep people up on that dance floor. Oh, definitely. You know, you could have, you could go out to dinner and you could have the best meal, right? And you could be like, oh my gosh, that was so delicious. But if you get in the car and you feel like or you're walking home and you feel like you're going to fall asleep on the way, then to me, like, I don't know, if you leave and you're kind of like energized and you're like, 
I could still go for a walk, go dancing, have some fun at home. You know, if I could do any of those things and I don't feel too full, but I feel really satisfied by the food, like that's always what I'm going for. Yeah, yeah. So let me see the beauty shot of your pork. It looks fantastic and I'm gonna have to wait for mine. You want it over here or you want it over here? I want you to show me, it looks so yummy. Oh, fantastic. I love how you're getting the the aioli and then the, the rotating that's like the rotating cake in the diner window yeah. <laughs> i want to see lj and you get after it that looks so fantastic <laughs> and it's super easy you know i mean this is something that anyone could throw together and you can feel like you're eating you know restaurant quality food or you know you can feel that little elevatedness to it and it's easy for anyone to do well, I love that. From the James Beard chef's mouth to our stove. <laughs> oh, Karen, you're such a superstar. Cheers. Thank Cheers. you so much. And Thanks for I, having me again, Anna. I love cooking with you. It's so much fun. We love having you. We'll see you at the Fox in the Night. Stay well. See you soon. Okay, bye. Mm. Oh, my gosh. It's just calling my name in this pan. Thank you so much, Karen, for being patient. <laughs> and I see you guys are full of inspiration and have the recipe planned for the night. So that's great. Um, so we'll see you next Monday. We've got um, Mom to Mom this Wednesday with Maria Sanson at 4 p.m. Um, the Hub Today weekend on Saturday and Sunday. And then we'll be back guns blazing power on um, in the chef's pantry next week um, at 4 p.m. on Monday. Thanks, guys. <laughs>